Jesus. We all know Facebook, the world's largest social network by users and one of the largest companies by revenue. On October 28, 2021, when his CEO, Mark Zuckerberg announced that the giant changed his name to Meta due to his plans to venture into the development of the metaverse. And it is that, who would risk leading a company as large as Facebook in such a risky move towards a territory as little explored as the metaverse? It would be like sailing the Titanic on an expedition to the Amazon. But the movement of the robot with hair is not so unpredictable if we know how to analyze its movements in recent years. On June 18, 2019, the company announced its plans to create a cryptocurrency backed by a basket of currencies. The plan was to create a non-profit that would include several of the largest companies in the technology and financial industry, such as MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, Stripe, eBay and Coinbase, as well as Facebook, of course, among others. The organization, which would receive the name of Libra, like the cryptocurrency, will safeguard the basket of coins that backed Libra and would be in charge of receiving payments in fiat currency from users to deliver the cryptocurrency in exchange. In addition, they would have the privilege of being the only ones who would have access to the information of the transactions between the users to be able to analyze it. But things are not so easy for Meta and the organization he supports. Immediately after the announcement of the plans to create Libra, they would face criticism and pressure from the main governments of the world, including the United States, which would see their monetary stability threatened, in other words, their ability to print Benjis. Only a few months later, the first members of the organization, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, eBay, Stripe and Mercado Pago, were withdrawn. The future of the project seemed full of obstacles. Feeling the pressure, Zuckerberg decided to break a Silicon Valley mantra, act fast and break everything, instead he decided to approach the project with caution and get permission from the authorities first. The first decision was to change the project from a basket of coins to several cryptocurrencies backed, each by a single fiat currency. In this way there would be a Libra backed by dollars, another by euros and so on with the main currencies. Then he would decide to go to the Swiss authorities to request a permit for a payment company, Later he rectified and said that instead he would request the same permit from the US authorities. In addition to the problems with the governments of the world, Libra would face a lawsuit for infringing the trademark of an American company, for which it would be forced to change the name of the project to DM. Finally, after several setbacks, in January 2022, Stuart Levy, CEO of DM, would announce that the organization would sell all its assets to the venture capital firm Silvergate Capital for a total of $182 million. But Meta would not give up his dream of an asset-backed cryptocurrency so easily, he just needed to make a change, to play in a field that he dominated, the digital field. And it is exactly what he intends to do, instead of backing a cryptocurrency with real assets, he would do it with digital assets within the metaverse. This is where the news of the name change of Facebook is not so strange. If you've ever played an open world game like Fortnite, then you know what I'm talking about when I refer to the metaverse. In the metaverse, just like in open world games, players can build the stage, constructing buildings, gadgets, or powers, which they then share or sell to other users. The only difference is that in the metaverse the exchange currency to transact all these digital assets are cryptocurrencies. Open world games have certain restrictions, players cannot create or do what they want, the creator of the video game decides what actions the players can or cannot do, he is the one who writes the rules of the game. For example he decides if the players can fly, or have infinite lives or superior weaponry, they also decide to whom virtual objects, such as vehicles, furniture or land, belong. But more importantly, they decide how much of each of these can be created. In this way, the creator of the video game has direct influence on the price that things can have within his virtual world, since he controls the supply and scarcity of these. If you have seen my previous videos you will have realized that what the creator of the open world does by controlling the supply of digital assets is very similar to what central banks do with the money supply by raising or lowering interest rates. To put it more clearly suppose that a friend told you about this wonderful idea of the metaverse, and how you can make millions with it, you simply have to invest first and once the world wakes up and finds out that this is the future, your assets in the metaverse will be worth millions, you decide to invest your children's education fund in this very disruptive idea, and you decide not to tell your wife until you are recognized as the next Satoshi Nakamoto, so you buy 100 acres of digital. 
Land in Zuckerberg's metaverse, you pay $100,000 for it, quite an offer. Now you have the ownership of your virtual land guaranteed by a fabulous NFT, which you can resell once your land is worth 1,000 times more. After a few months of counting down the days to buy your Lembo, Zuckerberg decides that he can make a few million more by creating more digital lands to the west of yours, and to do so, he'll also create an amusement park where people can buy powers to fly, walk on water and do all those wonderful and heretical things that you mortals can't do in this disappointing and boring real world. After the announcement of the new lands, you now watch in despair how the prices of the NFTs of the neighboring lands to yours plummet on cryptocurrency exchanges. The FUD takes over you and you sell your NFT for a small fraction of what it cost you. If you have been in the world of cryptocurrencies for a long time, this probably does not sound strange to you, the game of FOMO and FUD is something common in the world of cryptocurrencies, it is a game of fish and whales where whales are actors with a lot of power like miners and fish, well, you're the little fish, and we know that whales eat fish. In this game of the metaverse Zuckerberg not only pretends to be a whale, he pretends to be, the fucking whale, it is at this point where the doubt arises, where would the plans of Libra or DM fit into this game of the metaverse? It is more likely that Zuckerberg will develop a cryptocurrency to trade all these NFTs in the metaverse, this could work as points to buy only on this platform, in this way his cryptocurrency would not face all the regulation and obstacles that DM faced, since it would not be supported in a fiat currency, but it will work more like a points program or like Amazon gift cards, something that has a much more favorable regulation. In addition, Zuckerberg could play with the value of his own cryptocurrency since he could back it with NFTs from his own metaverse, and since as we saw he controls the supply of these, it works as a central bank of the metaverse, raising the value of his cryptocurrency by decrease the supply of NFTs and increase otherwise. All this metaverse sounds metaperverse, it seems as if Zuckerberg does not have the slightest empathy, I think he is a robot. If all this metaverse, blockchain and cryptocurrencies sounds too complicated to you, maybe it's time for you to take my free course on crypto marketing and learn more about the subject before Zuckerberg takes over your soul and monetizes it, you have the link on the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share to spread the word.